I want to talk a few minutes about fiber. I haven't talked much about fiber in years. I mean, I've talked about it, but not really. And I'm not going to go super in-depth, but I wanted to at least talk a few minutes about it. So fiber is a carbohydrate, but unlike most carbohydrates, which are broken down into sugar molecules called glucose, fiber passes through the body mostly undigested. Thus, it's often, often considered a no-calorie carbohydrate. Now, something that's really important for you to know is plants, not animals, are where you get fiber. And there are two types of fiber. But most plants provide both types. And that's important. And you'll hear why in just, in just a moment. Most plants provide both types. Where do we get fiber? From plants. So let's go. Soluble fiber is the first type. Soluble fiber dissolves in water and can help lower glucose levels as well as help lower blood cholesterol. I didn't even put the foods on here that are more soluble fiber based because honestly, I don't want you to worry about it, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But foods with soluble fiber include oatmeal, barley, carrots, citrus fruits, peas, psyllium, chia seeds, nuts, beans, lentils, apples, and blueberries. And there's others. And remember, most plants provide both types. This is, this is the first one, soluble fiber. Dissolves in water. Next up, insoluble fiber. Does not dissolve in water and can help food move through your digestive system, promoting regularity and helping prevent constipation. Foods with insoluble fibers include whole wheat products, especially wheat bran, quinoa, brown rice, legumes, leafy greens like kale, almonds, walnuts, seeds, berries, and fruits with edible skins like pears and apples. The evidence-based benefits of adequate fiber intake from real food. Look at how I worded that. Tell me I didn't do that on purpose. The evidence-based benefits of adequate fiber intake from real food are many. Here are the major players, the major benefits. First, reduced incidence of type 2 diabetes, reduced cardiovascular disease, reduced cancers, lowers blood pressure, lowers blood glucose, lowers blood cholesterol, increases bowel movement frequency, increases mineral absorption in the intestinal tract, reduced ener energy intake, due at least partly to fiber promoting feelings of fullness. Okay? Evidence-based benefits of adequate fiber intake from real food. How much fiber a day? 25 to 35 grams. Pretty much as simple as that. Yeah, a little lower, a little higher, depending, blah, 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 but that's big. this is basically it. How much fiber a day? 25 to 35 grams. So in study after study, including this April 2022 study that I'm highlighting here, right here, and this one's published in Food Science and Nutrition, a lot of studies have concluded that those who consume real food, not ultra-processed, providing adequate fiber, enjoy the health benefits that I've discussed. Including, as this study did, that adequate fiber reduces the incidence of obesity and its related disease, diseases. So their conclusion was, there is strong evidence to suggest a role for dietary fiber in the prevention of obesity and its related diseases. And as researchers do, they say, with further research required to substantiate the evidence in a range of dietary contexts and to fully understand the mechanisms involved. You can tell these aren't marketers. You can tell they're researchers because they're not so cocky and they don't state things so definitively, so assuredly, so positively certain. They leave room for nuance. They leave room for the fact that more research is needed. But anyway, what I want to say about that is some may argue regarding with relate, relation to fiber that it's correlation and not causation. Like you're getting the benefits that those who can... Those who consume the most fiber are those also eating the most whole, minimally processed real food with plenty of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, nuts, and legumes, also exercising and otherwise living a healthy lifestyle. That's something to consider, right? It, that if, if we're going to attribute benefits to fiber, is it the fiber specifically or is it the fact that the people who consume the most fiber are doing these other things? So is it that all-in totality of the lifestyle providing the health benefits attributed to fiber, or is it directly because of the fiber? No one knows for sure. No one knows for sure. So my take-home suggestions relating to fiber are these. Number one, unless you have a specific medical need, don't worry about soluble versus insoluble. Most plants provide both anyway. Just eat whole, minimally processed foods, including plants. NFL number one, right? Eat real food 90% of the time if you're in maintenance, 95% or more of the time if you're in action. Nothing changing there. Just, just do that. 
Number two, if you're in a fat cutting phase, go heavy on fibrous vegetables, which is what we promote anyway. Go heavy on fibrous vegetables because they only provide about 25 calories per cup. So you get more fiber and nutrient bang for your caloric buck. Yep, you can get a lot of fiber in legumes, you can get a lot of fiber in nuts, you can get a lot of fiber in some fruits and so forth, but all of those provide more calories per cup than fibrous vegetables. I'm not saying don't eat those things, I'm just saying that if you're in a fat cutting phase, you're gonna get a big fibrous bang for your buck if you go with fibrous vegetables. And number three, if your weight is right where you want it, then strive for at least three cups of vegetables a day. That's NFL number 15 of the 15 fundamentals that, we, that I promote. So if your weight is right where you want it, strive for at least three cups of vegetables a day and a variety of other real food, plant-based items that you want. The idea here is not to have you eating garbage and then supplementing with Metamucil. I'm not saying if you're a physician or whoever, or you've decided or whatever, if medically you're supposed to be on that, fine. What, but otherwise, if, you get, if you're getting your fiber from whole, minimally processed, higher fiber foods, which are gonna be, they're gonna come from plants, um, and you're including those in your mix and you're including those every day, multiple times a day, really to get in the 25 to 35 grams of fiber, you are far more likely to do well without any regrets, without looking back saying, I should have, I would have, I could have. Um, and that's, that's what I'm saying. So it's not about getting it from a supplement. It's about eating whole minimally processed foods that already have or are high in fiber to reap all of the benefits. And then we don't have to worry about correlation and causation. We just do it wherever the benefits are coming from, whether it's from the complete reduction of ultra-processed um, toxins to the, all of the positive pro-benefits and the components that are in uh, whole minimally processed foods as a whole, whatever it may be, we're gonna, we're gonna benefit when we do that, okay? All right.